Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, it should be a great day. Uh, this topic, which I know everyone in this room and on Zoom cares huge amount, is about uh, you know fundamental equity and the ethical principles that engages overseas uh, the emerging science, technology, and health and medicine. And what I thought I'd do is uh, give a short framing of the day, giving you enough background for those who are attending first time. But of course, many of you already know this issue well, so that we can go forward with the welcoming address from Monica, Rob, and the Congressman Foster, and then we can therefore go ahead the rest of the day, particularly start with Landra Nelson, who's here to speak about this. So, let's see. Advance? Great. Oops. Okay. Um, you know, when we think about this topic, I'm thinking about emerging science, technology, innovation. You can see that we're really living in an amazing, amazing time of advances in technology and uh, science. To the extent you can see the range of new technologies, the biomedical breakthroughs, that is greatly influencing the way in which we look at the future of health and medicine. To the extent that when you think about all these things being applied, one would imagine that it's going to change the way health care is delivered. Uh, we'll have effective prediction prevention, uh, continued care, of course, many new insights. So Chen Zuckerberg in 2016 said, can we cure, prevent, manage all disease by the end of the century? I'd like to see a show of hands of people how they feel about that statement. Can we do this? Yes, show of hands? Only a few. Well, I actually think it can be achieved if you use the word exactly they use it. Can we do this by the century? That's 80 years from now. And if you think about 80 years ago, and I remember being, in fact, now I'm not as old as 80, but having gone through my training, when I started my clinical training and heart failure, we have digitalis, doesn't work, and diuretics, right? Where we are today, it's just amazing. I think it is possible. The question, would everybody benefit from it, is the question. It's not the issue of can, the issue of will everybody benefit. So in that regard, I think about the brave new world, 1913, when these technologies were, you know, dreamt about, fantasized. But the concern at the time was a dystopian world in which we use these technology to look at a social hierarchy of intelligence, do conditioning, and, uh, intelligent conditioning, genetic selection, and here we are, as you can see, when you think about biotechnology and machine learning, you know this well. There are really tremendous amount of risk and potential harms. Next slide. Okay, so um, this journey started some years ago when, of course, many of you are experts in this, but, you know, I, as a physician scientist, began very much aware of this problem and wrote this paper in trans Science Translational Medicine about what are we going to do about looking at social and health implications of emerging technologies. And, of course, it's really beyond the issue of what uh, Huxley talked about, we are fundamentally also, as I framed up the issue of Zuckerberg, the issue of whether everybody has access to all these emerging technologies, cost affordability, equity, ethical issues, privacy ownership, workforce training, bias, and many, many other issues of social equity. So I think where we started this journey with many of you is the whole idea of how do we actually bring together a mechanism by which we can have appropriate governance and oversight of science technology. And as you see in this picture on the right, uh, you know, science is moving so fast that in fact we're always having trouble catching up with this society with regards to seeing how we can actually have proper oversight and proper usage. The Coolidge dilemma says the problem is that when you have new technology, you know, too much uh, you know, uh, policy uh, is, um, can impact innovation. 
But if you're too late, of course, it may be too late to act. So that's what we've all been facing with in the last. Uh... So this is where we start our journey. In 2018, the National Academy of Medicine created a strategic plan. And in fact, in goal number three is the whole idea of looking at technology, science, and how this can shape the future of medicine. But in this regard, uh, one of the areas that we came up with, in addition to look at translation, you know, the, uh, the value of death is actually the last bullet. Now that we as a academy should address social, ethical, and work so implementation implications of these changes. And also important issues of equity and guidance. And uh, you can see that Deborah Matthews, who's here, played a big role in working with me and my team to start working towards this issue of creating, in fact, a committee of uh, science, emerging science, technology, and innovation. Now, um, Mershon and Wallach said it best in this regard that emerging technologies involve a complex mix of applications, risk, benefits, uncertainties, stakeholders, and public concerns. So no single entity is able to fully govern any of these multifaceted, rapidly evolving fields and the innovative tools, techniques they produce. So we created this committee that many of you are part of, and I certainly would give you a shout out to many who's done so much work on it, to say, what do we do about this area, right? So we formed this in 2020, brought together a truly diverse experts from academia, from science and engineering, from uh, private sector, even investors, from regulatory agencies, you name it. And this was, in fact, co-chaired by Londra Nelson, who's here today. She chaired it until she went to the White House, but also along with uh, George Daly, who's going to be with us later on today, and uh, to boot. And Londra was uh, replaced by Altichero when Londra stepped down. So we worked for over two years in saying, how do we work towards creating such a framework? And you're going to hear a lot more about this from Deborah and others about the fact we did a case study approach. We look at case studies to learn about what these use cases can teach us lessons about societal, ethical, legal, economic impl implications. We set a set of principles to guide the governance of emerging technologies. We have preliminary heat map that you're going to hear a lot more about, which we say that we can actually put new technology as it emerges into where on the heat map do we need, in fact, be concerned about, and how do we create, last one, a governance structure. And finally, we thought that we should do a consensus study to examine the issue in greater detail. So Keith Wailu and Keith Yamamoto uh, chaired this study. Uh, in fact, it turns out to be extremely, extremely thoughtful, in my opinion. Because what they talked about, the important issue is the fundamental issue of a concept that, in fact, it goes beyond individual concerns to collect societal values, and that for our ecosystem in science, technology, innovation is dynamic and diverse, but does not prioritize alignment with equity. So their point is reorienting innovation, advanced equity is a vital, challenging imperative but 21st century science, medicine, technology. They're going to tell you a lot more about the study, except what I learned greatly from this is that the whole idea of embedding equity and development cultural equity throughout the entire ecosystem. So you will hear from them, as you can see the slide illustrate very nicely, from conceiving an idea to looking at funding, publication, and research to designing the research, to looking at uh, developing assembly a technology, all the way to licensing, I, technology licensing and transfer from university to the private sector, going all the way through such a technology in the private sector, including, in fact, uh, cost coverage, uh, including regulation, post-market, that every step along the way, one should think about what about equity? What does this mean to equity? I think that, in fact, 
is a fundamental issue, I think, is so true. So now you can see the convergence of two pieces of work we've been doing for the last almost four years. That is to say, one is, how do we ensure that science and innovation benefit everyone equitably? When I talk about Ken Zuckerberg, I actually believe it can be achieved that you can either, either cure or manage or prevent either. But I think the question is not everybody could benefit from it. How do we assure this? Second, of course, is that given the fact that so many emerging technologies come out and have impact on all different parts of what we do, from costs, affordability to access, to ethics, you name it, how do we bring together a framework where multiple sectors look at how to govern emerging technologies? And the third, as I said, is how do you instill a culture from day one? Because if everybody thinks that way, I think the issue would be, shall we say, less than the way we're dealing with today. So that's what we are here today to frame up those issues and to have those discussions. 